Is there still any any uh, mob fingers in the business at all? At, or you know, if there is some guys that are uh, attached, they're not really doing mob things. Uh-huh. They just have family that now it's just legit because of corporations. But I mean, my my two biggest bosses were. Paul Sam Pugnero and Richie Amafatano. Okay. So they I mean, both those, sound like they've yeah. done things. Yeah. <laughs> so Paw Show. Paw Show. Paw Show for Show. If it's Tuesday at 6 a.m., you know what time it is. It's Toss Show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Been watching a lot of Pat McAfee lately. How you doing, Eddie? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good. I missed you this past weekend. You didn't show up to my daughter's first birthday. Oh, man. Sorry. That's all right. Just send a check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a big week. Super Bowl's coming up. I'm excited. I think, I honestly feel this will be the year that the Buffalo Bills finish the job. Oh, the, the Bills were eliminated. You serious? Oh, yeah. You telling me that the Buffalo Bills are no longer in the playoffs? Not in the playoffs. That's crazy because they get to pick what day uh, they play on. You know, <laughs> when when is the weather going to be best for us? <laughs> and Josh Allen is just the future of everything. Hmm. Wait, maybe we can at least reuse that graphic now that they lost that you misspelled, Eddie. Mm. Uh, the two and a half years that this current Buffalo Bills team had potential. And then you misspelled potential. Here's here's the problem with our show when we put graphics up is that I'm the worst speller in the world and the second worst speller in the world is Eddie. So now you've got you've got two people that can't spell and and things slip through the crack when there's only a three person team. Anyway, all right. So the so the Buffalo Bills lost. Well, that's that's uh that's too bad. But I am um I am looking forward to the Super Bowl. Now, normally this time of the year, I'm in Vegas for over 15 years. I've had a residency at the Mirage, and I always perform the week before the weekend before the Super Bowl, uh, so that I can place all my bets. So now I'm not at the Mirage anymore because the Mirage. As some of you may know, was bought by the uh, Seminole Casino, and it's going to be a hard rock. Uh, and they're going to tear down the volcano. From the ashes of the volcano, a guitar will rise, a, a new beacon on the strip. Now, I may go back when they finish that uh, that that switch over, because I've got a great relationship with the Seminoles. But now I'm. I'm jumping ship for the time being. I'm performing at a new casino for the first time in 15 years. Uh, and I'm going to make that announcement, but not today. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that's what you call a tease. <laughs> All right. Super Bowl 58 is this weekend against the San Francisco 49ers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. The 49ers are favored by two points. I will be betting on the Kansas City Chiefs. Why, you ask, Eddie? Mm-hmm. Because Taylor Swift doesn't lose. Mm. She just doesn't lose. You know, last time I brought her up on the show, I said something to the effect of that I, that I love everything about her. And, you know, I, I teased uh, one, of, uh, one of her lyrics that I took too literally or something like that. But uh, people were like, oh, you like everything about Taylor Swift? And I, the answer is I do. I, I'm a fan. You know, is her music meant for uh, me, a 48-year-old? No. But, I mean, I can still listen to, to some of it. I get why it's hits. That one song with Bon Iver, I like that one, where he's just like, I don't know what he does. He just, you know, howls in a weird <laughs> voice. I like a lot of her songs. That's It's fine. It, it is what it is. It's not, again, it's not meant for me. I can appreciate it still. But here's where she won me over. This is why I am... A, a, a Swifty for life because when that uh, radio DJ uh, grabbed her ass, groped her, and then she says, well, I'm going to sue you. He's like, I didn't do anything. He's like, I'm going to, she's like, I'm going to sue you for a buck. One dollar. She goes to court, flies back and forth to Denver over and over, destroying the environment with her beautiful <laughs> jet and wins a dollar. 
Oh, I love it because radio DJs are creeps. And I guarantee he did exactly what she said he did. Uh, I think that's baller. And then when she wanted to own all her music and the record label's like, yeah, we'd rather fuck you over. And she's like, well, all right, I'll just re-record everything and I'll tell my fans, uh, just listen to my version. And they're like, okay. And they do it. That's crazy. So yeah, good. Good for her. I got no problem with her. Oh, quit panning the camera over to her during the game. Why? She's the biggest star in the game. <laughs> but who's doing the halftime? Usher? Oh, she could just walk out there mid-performance, tap him on the shoulder and say, I'll, I'll do it from here. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, that was a great show. I mean, Usher's big thing was that he could dance like Michael Jackson. <laughs> but now whenever I think of Michael Jackson, I just think of the people you know on, on the corner of the bed having to stare at the <laughs> whatever that horrible scene from the documentary was. <laughs> trying to get through all the padlocks in the secret attic bedroom. Okay, sorry, that was too long of a tangent, but that's why I like the Chiefs. <laughs> um, All of this gambling talk has got me really excited. Do you know what today is? What's today? Pit Boss Day. Oh, yes. Pit Boss Day. Now, I'll probably talk about this in the interview, but... um. When I worked at the Mirage for the past 15 years, I would gamble after dinner. I, I have a show on Friday at 10 o'clock. Show goes till midnight. I have dinner, scarf that down. Usually get a surf and surf. That's a crab legs and lobster. <laughs> uh, and then we go gamble. And he was always the pit boss that we enjoyed seeing the most. Probably because he... Uh, would turn a blind eye and let us steal chips. <laughs> no, he didn't let us do that, but it, it was, uh, it was always fun to see him. Hope you guys enjoy. Pasha. Uh, if you've ever seen me perform in Vegas, know that a couple hours later, this guy watched me gamble your hard-earned money away. <laughs> My favorite pit boss from the beautiful Mirage Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, Josh. How you doing? Good. Life is good? Yeah, I cannot complain. Oh, I, I don't I never understand when people can't complain. I could complain constantly all day long. I just don't want to hear it. Oh, oh you don't want to hear it. Not, not from me. <laughs> just people in general. Like, everyone's got their of, things. Do you hate people? No. You don't get sick of people in your line I, of work? I actually don't. I uh, I think it's, you know, it's a different job and I don't know if I just have been doing it so long that I'm immune to it, but it doesn't bother me at all. Like some people get frustrated with the noise or people yelling and I don't know. It doesn't bother me. Does the sound of slot machines make you, do you think it's done some permanent brain damage? No, but I hate cigarette smoke. So that's the only part that sucks. But I mean, it's been nice. It's it's obviously getting less and less cigarette smoke. Yeah. Like all you have to do is go into a, cas a casino or hotel in Reno and be like, oh, this is what it used to be like. The beautiful yellowish tint oh, on the inside of the walls. Yeah. That's rough. First question that I ask all my guests, do you believe in ghosts? No. See, let me tell you something right now. This is why I know that you're like a normal human. That's the only answer. Everybody, anytime I talk to people and they say that they believe in ghosts, I'm like, oh, I'm getting ready to have a conversation with an absolute fucking lunatic. <laughs> all right, Josh, um, where are you from originally? Well, I was born in Virginia. But then I lived in Washington State for a few years, mm -hmm. and then I moved to Vegas in 1987 as a kid. But you basically grew up in Vegas. Yeah, that's pretty much all I know. Do you like Vegas? Uh, you know, I do. I mean, I would love to live like in a small town somewhere, but then you always want to go back to like the city. So well, you gotta get like a vacation home in maybe a small town. It, yeah, I still work for a living. I hear so, you, but you yeah. can get you can get away. <laughs> you know, like a little side, and then you rent it out or something like that. I I I, I know how people live. <laughs> We're the same age, ish. Yeah. We are, right? Yeah. Okay. Within a few months, I think. Oh, oh really? When's your birthday? June twenty fifth. Oh, seventy five. We're less than a month apart. Oh, less than a month. Okay. I'm May 29th. Oh yeah. Look at that. Huh? We both just ended up in casinos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was your father? Uh, did he work at the casinos or no? He did. Uh huh. As a gambler and alcoholic. Okay. So yeah, he was a yeah. He put in his hours for free there. And did that that had an impact on you? Uh, I think only in a good way. Like I just saw, like, don't do that. You don't gamble at all? Very rare. 
Well, if you if you what are you interested in? If you were, I would rather make a twenty dollars sports bet and stay home and watch the game. Fair enough. Because when I go back to the casino, if I'm at the table, I would love to hit someone with a chair sometimes Uh because then I'm not at work. Uh huh. And when they do the annoying stuff, then uh. You're like, this guy's got to go. Isn't it crazy that your job really only exists because people are inherently bad or like looking to do something bad? Like, isn't that what your job really is to like make sure when something bad is going to happen, you are there yeah. to make sure that it doesn't happen? That's what I always say. Like people like sometimes at work get frustrated with people making noise. I'm like, you ask them to come here. Make bad decisions, spend money, go to strip clubs, stay up all night. Uh-huh. But then you want them to be calm and quiet. Like, yeah, it yeah, I do. Sense. I want them to be calm and quiet. <laughs> Act like goddamn normal people. I once saw a guy uh, like saying horrible things, and, but he was losing tons of money and he was tipping regardless, win or lose, uh, huge amounts of money. And they were just letting it go. They're just letting it go. The biggest example I ever have of that is uh, Rick Rizzolo. He used to own the Crazy Horse. Okay. And complete— Mob mob, guy? Complete mob guy. Yeah, yeah. Like, there was times where he would lose a couple hundred thousand, and his mob guys on the side, he would just tell them, go to the car and get the money. And they would literally come back with a black trash bag full of cash and dump it on the Baccarat table, and three dealers would count it for 30-plus minutes, Uh like $200,000 cash and loose bills. (laughs) So— Yes, those uh, those people did exist more, but they're still around. Uh huh. Did you do you have to be a, a dealer before you can become like a floor supervisor or any of that? Pretty much, unless you got some uh, old mafia ties where they might try to slip you through the cracks. So everyone that's for it was once a dealer. Yeah, unless, like I said, there's been a couple of times where people show up and they don't really have the greatest background story. Sure. And you can tell they just were juiced in as a floorman and they're like learning on the go. Okay. <laughs> so. Is there still any any uh, mob fingers in the business at all? At Earth? You know, if there is some guys that are uh, attached, they're not really doing mob things. Uh-huh. They just have family that now it's just legit because of corporations. But I mean, my my two biggest bosses were Paul Sam Pugnero and Richie Amafatano. Okay, so they I mean, both those, sound like they've yeah. done things. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, they're retired now. A couple of few years ago, but. Definitely, there's still people floating around. That- Do you want people to try to, like, steal or cheat? Does that make it interesting? I could care less if they rob that place blind. <laughs> right, but <laughs> have, have you ever seen someone almost— I mean, is there any way to pull it off or no? Uh, I mean, yeah, if you have, like, a dealer in on it, and they're, like, you know, paying you— Like, you could be putting—they could be paying you, like, a green chip underneath, like, some red chips and mm-hmm. small stuff. I've seen dealers arrested on the game. Oh, that's nice. So— they, they do watch, and sometimes they cheat, and they let them cheat for a while so that they can learn every little thing about it and how they're doing it and how they're getting away with it uh-huh. so they can use it for the future. You ever bust any MIT autistic kids? Uh, <laughs> we see them, and we know they're counting, so, but most of the time we just call surveillance, and they do their thing. Counting cards. Do you guys really give a shit? Don't you want people to try? Uh, counting cards only increases your odds. Right. So, again, the, the casinos, they're, I guess they're worried that uh, they're not going to make a billion dollars this quarter. So they, I hate anybody that says that, they're like, oh, I, don't, I brought 200 to, and I don't care if I win or lose. I'm like, what do you mean you don't care? Give me that $200. There, you lost. <laughs> you ever choke somebody out on the floor? Uh, it's been a while, but uh-huh. I, have, I have swung some hands a few times. Ballpark. How many cameras are in the casino? It's, it's got to be thousands do you ever go into that room? Yeah. Is it neat? It's just a bunch of monitors and big desks. Uh, is their job fun? I don't think so. They sit in a room and they just randomly watch TVs unless we call for them to watch something specific. What type of, what type of, is it a t- certain type of person that takes that job in general? It, usually it's like security people. They just, it's like a lateral move. They mm-hmm. go from like security over to okay. surveillance. Who's, who, what's the weirdest group that, that works at casinos that you're like, oh, those, the, they're famously bizarro. Or do Probably you know hard count. Hard count? Yeah, they're the ones that come through and like change the boxes in the middle of the night. Oh. Yeah. I always hate when they just like slow me down. What's the best event in Vegas to bring in a good crowd? It's either got to be Super Bowl or uh, March Madness. I always work all of the main sporting events. That's yeah, I've, always- no- I've noticed that. <laughs> do you remember that I found a $1,000 chip on the floor? I yeah, found I it on I the store. I picked it up. You know what I did? Didn't even hesitate. 
picked a thousand chip, go, oh, look at this. Here's a dealer. Somebody dropped a thousand dollar chip. Didn't even hesitate. I felt like I felt like they should have just like shut down the casino and had a parade in my honor of just <laughs> how they didn't give a fuck. They're like, oh yeah, that was some some rich guy last night that pissed away, you know, six figures. Yeah, we have some people that throw chips or rip cards, uh -huh. do all kinds of crazy stuff. Am I the only person you know that's ever doubled down on blackjack? No. Oh, okay. We have plenty of drunk people. Yeah, but I don't even do it when I'm drunk. I think I, know, I think it's a solid strategy. <laughs> You're doing it for kicks, and they think it's a good investment. <laughs> I also like to double down on hard 12s, 13s, and 14s just because it makes, uh, it makes me so angry when I lose. <laughs> By the way, are we supposed to tip? Uh, are we supposed to tip you, the pit bosses, the floor managers? What's the no. rule on that? No, we're not allowed. You're not allowed to? No. Okay. Thank God. If you were going to say that we're supposed to, I was going to be like, Pete— it's been a long time. We haven't done shit. Uh, how much should you tip a dealer? You know, it depends on the dealer, I guess. But, uh, you know, it's easier to tip when you're winning. If you're just putting them up in action, I think they appreciate that, you know, on a you know, semi-regular basis for, you know, proportional to what you're playing. Is that better than, uh, than just at the end tipping them? I think so, because I think uh, halfway through some of these uh, sissies get their feelings hurt. Mm -hmm. They start thinking they're not going to get tipped. Oh. So then they kind of. I got you. Yeah. I don't want to ever be considered like a great tipper, but I want, I just don't want anybody to ever think he was a horrible tipper. I, that's bad. I got to, I got to tip more. <laughs> we, 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 we tip all the people uh, backstage, the, the, whatchamacallit, all those security guys, and then the butler. You, you guys tip while you play. Sure, sometimes, but it's not like real n dollars because we're betting such shitty amounts. Who was up my butler? Eric. Eric. Did you did you know Eric? No. I like this guy because he would come into my room immediately and be like, listen, are you looking at Eastern Tennessee Tech College this weekend in softball? And I'm like, what? <laughs> no, I'm not fucking. He's like, he's like, they're favored by two and a half runs. I'm just saying. And then he'd walk out of the room. And I was like supposed to do something with that. He would always have the most absurd <laughs> tips. And think, oh, and I never acted on anything he ever said. Do you guys still have the authority to comp breakfast? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I have some coupons that I can hand out with a signature. I, one time when I was in Vegas really young, and I was probably playing blackjack or something at a decent amount of money, uh, and this guy was, like, really vested in me. He was like, oh, he was, like, really getting excited for every time I won. And, and then I noticed it was like his hand was on me a lot. I was like, oh, he thinks I'm a hooker. <laughs> like, he thought I was a hooker. He thought I was like some young boy that was just in a casino. I was like, oh. And I was kind of flattered in a weird way. But <laughs> anyway. Well, let me tell people why we actually have a relationship. Because my whole goal, I always loved gambling. I loved gambling for probably a similar reason that you don't gamble. My father was a pastor and we didn't we weren't allowed to do anything ever like it was like you can't listen to me, rock music you can't dance you can't uh, gambling that's like you're, you're trying to win money for no reason that's that's against whatever the bible says i don't know anyway <laughs> so i immediately loved gambling but i learned quickly i thought the only way I'm ever going to win at gambling because I'm not smart enough to actually be a good gambler uh, is I've got to become a performer because that's the only way I can walk out positive. But no, anyway, getting to this, so many performers, they get huge credits. They blow the ton of money at casinos. I talked to the Mirage when I first started there and I said, hey, I want to gamble, but I don't like to gamble a lot of money. And that you guys were nice enough to let me every night after my show have a blackjack table in the high limit room with me and my friends and let me play for any denomination, like $5 a hand, which I always thought was kind of the coolest perk that I could get in a casino was allowed to gamble for no money because anytime my friends come or work with me, they're blown away that I'm allowed to gamble for five bucks a hand. Yeah. 
My favorite thing to do with my friends, which you guys allow me to do, which is really absurd that you allow, is when they go to the bathroom, I like to take all their chips and put it in play. And then I just tell the dealer to wait (laughs) until they walk out of the bathroom and then deal. And it's just so funny how it enrages them. But then immediately if their hand is remotely good, they're like, oh, this is exciting. (laughs) (laughs) Now you've watched me for a long time. What's the most you think you've ever seen me lose in a night? I'm going to say 4,000. You've seen me lose 4,000? I, I can't remember if it was 2,000 or 4,000, but okay. somewhere in there. Not Nothing crazy. That's crazy. I don't even want to, I didn't even want to hear that. <laughs> I used to have a safety deposit box there and I put 500 bucks in it when I started and I never touched it for like, like a decade. And it was like, I think at one point it got to $20,000. Really? But yeah, but then, then, it, then it went away completely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most you've ever seen someone win? Millions. We Millions. Have, yeah, we have $100,000 chips that we bring out. And uh-huh. can, the most at our property, uh, they play $300,000 per hand. It's so scary, isn't yeah. it? I mean, when Do you, you feel it just watching it? I don't anymore. I really don't. I, I just, I'm so numb to it. That Are you angry that they're doing I could it? I care less. Like, uh, it's just amazing. I could care less. Yeah. <laughs> I think I would make me... I mean, I, I I just always would hope for them. I don't know why I, I would hope for them to get like like just like a hard fourteen and the dealer to show an ace. And just like, ah, deal with that. Are you allowed to uh uh like if, when the dealer tries to take your cards, just put your hand on top of her hand softly? Only if you're making eye contact. Okay. Hey, tell the story about the homeless guy. Oh, they had a homeless guy. Details could be a little bit off because it's been over 20 years, but I still came like in story. with a social security check. And mm-hmm. I want to say it was somewhere between $750,000. And over days and days, this guy ran it up close to a million dollars, just playing as stupid as you possibly can. Yeah. 750 to a thousand dollars. Yeah. And he brought it to $1 million, plain insane. Yeah, just plain completely asinine. <laughs> Really stupid. And again, he was a homeless guy, so he's constantly taking his shoes off and trying okay. to put his feet up. And yeah, yeah, he's wandering and doing stuff he's not supposed to. And and then he moved into the casino? He's literally, well, they're comping him. Right. So they they want you to put the money back in action. Uh-huh. So they're comping him. He's staying there, and it's dragging on for you know weeks. But as he started to lose the money back, uh, Steve Wynn just got tired of it and just wanted him to leave with something in his pocket. Uh-huh. So I believe with $50,000 left, he kicked him out of the casino. Oh, that's nice. I, I didn't think there was going to be a Steve Wynn nice story, but that's a uh, yeah. that's that's at least, I mean, 50000 I wish he would have kicked him out when he was at a half a million, but... Yeah. Fine. 50,000. I'm sure I'm sure he turned his life around. What, yeah. What do you have to do to get free stuff? What what's what's the actual what's the minimum you have to do to get a free night stay in in Las Vegas? Uh, I've heard like it's uh like $100 a hand for like 4 hours. Oh, no, that's awful. Yeah. It's horrible. <laughs> Way too much money. Are there actual coolers? Do you guys actually hire coolers? No. No. Do you agree that magic is stupid? Uh yeah. Good. It's the right answer. It's the right answer. What do you, what who that magician kid? Uh, Shin. Shin Lim. Shin Lim. He's not allowed on the floor. Is that real or is it like you guys are just? I, I've never seen any type of memo or anything okay. like that. Yeah. But he's amazing at magic. Yeah, I've heard. I haven't seen it. What's the best show to see in Vegas? I'm joking. I know it's mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, What's I, do, the best I show? do love my comedy, so I like to go to all the comedy shows. But um, the Cirque shows, they're cool. That guy's crazy that invented those. Yeah. That French-Canadian guy? He, guy yeah, yeah, yeah. he used to come in and play. Yeah, he plays big, mount, big yeah. amounts. Yeah. He's a real degenerate. I mean, I haven't seen him for quite a while. It's been a while, but yeah. I think he's, it I don't, doesn't matter. He's still printing money. Yeah. What about athletes? You see a lot of athletes? Oh, yeah. Who are the dumbest athletes? Well, I mean, uh, Rodman used to get in a lot of trouble and try, Did he? To, try to grab the crotch of the dealers and stuff and goof around. Oh, that's got to upset a few of those guys. <laughs> the most boring disappointment was uh, Michael Jordan. Oh, really? Yeah. Not a lot of enthusiasm? No. He's, it's almost like we're non-existent in the room. You ever seen Phil Mickelson? No. Oh, bitch tits. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. You shouldn't, you, you shouldn't call Phil Mickelson bitch tits. Barkley? You seen Barkley again? Yeah. He seems like a great guy. Really cool. Down to earth, always just, let's like 
two guys just hanging out bullshitting. But but he but is, does he lose? I assume he loses. Uh, he doesn't. He hasn't played a lot at the Mirage. Okay. But he comes in there and hangs out with a couple guys and plays a few dollars. All right. You know the the one that used to always depress me, or I thought was depressing, was uh, Ben Affleck. They, anytime there's like a photo of him, I've seen like gambling, or it's just like he looks just sad, and he's trying to beat the game, which is well, really he's stupid. Married to Jennifer Lopez. I mean, is I, is that know, good? I'd, I'd be stressed out and sad too. No, 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 no. That's that would be exciting. Je, that, I, that, I, this is like pre- she seems like a headache. <laughs> I wouldn't argue that. She's definitely probably a lot. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, he always he, he thinks he's a card count, or he is a card counter, and he takes pride in that, which is always just weird to me. You just want to sit there, like you've already you've already hit the jackpot in life, Ben. You're you're really excited about taking this casino for a couple grand. Who's a big gambler that I should? I mean, most of our biggest gamblers, they're people you would never recognize the names. They're no, I like watching them walk down the villa hallway. Yeah, like I can tell, like it's like, oh, look at this. Old, old Asian man, and look at these two girls that are clearly in the business. Yeah. And then there's like like four security guys with a briefcase. I'm yeah. like, oh, this is exciting. I don't like to walk behind them too closely because sometimes the perfume is strong. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me sneeze. I used to think the Vene- when I was when I first went to the strip and I the Venetian opened. And I was like, I stayed in one of their rooms and they had like a sunken living room. I was like, this is unbelievable. I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Eh, times have changed. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't say what villa I stay in, but I will. Because I stay in Villa 2. I've stayed in the same room for over a decade. Do you know why I stay in that room? I do now. You heard the story? Yeah. Okay. It's true. So one time I was in a lanai, which is a tier less than, let me tell you something about the Mirage Hotel. Beautiful <laughs> hotel, whatever. There's like your normal hotel, but then there's this other area where it's like the, the the big wigs, the whales or whoever. But anyway, so one time I'm in uh, the, the lanai uh, with a girl and we wake up in the morning and I look out my window and there's a man uh, naked on my patio furniture. And I start freaking out. I'm like, what is happening? So I call security and and uh, I guess I had left the front door or, uh, dead bolted. And so they couldn't get in. And I'm like, but there's a door in the back to get in the back way. I'm like, get this naked dude out of here. And it, it was a lot of back and forth. I was screaming. I was freaking out. And then they finally got into the room. They went into my backyard there, and they said, "Sir, what are you doing here?" And he's like, "I don't know." And they're like, "Well, you, you know, you, you, you're being arrested or whatever." And he's like, "Well, do you sh- should I take this bathing suit?" And they're like, "Is it your bathing suit?" <laughs> and he's like, "I don't know. I don't." Know. <laughs> and I don't think it was, but he ended up putting it on. So anyway, it turns out he got drunk the night before and he climbed the wall. And he just fell asleep, he tried to get into the room, but thankfully didn't. And this is me early on in, uh, in my career as somebody that was successful. Because it's like I wasn't successful at all for a long time. And now I was like, oh, this is exciting. So I was a little bit more, uh, I don't know, maybe an asshole. I was calling my agent. I'm like, what are you going to, this guy's a naked guy. but And they're like, they're offering me like, what are they going to give me? They already give me f- a free hotel and food. So they said, we are going to always put you in this villa in the back. It's the it's a very nice one. It's a two bedroom. It's beautiful, and it's right. It backs up against the uh, the tigers. So or the, whatever. It's just tigers. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, so nobody will ever <laughs> climb your wall again. <laughs> yeah, it was what basically why I got that room. You eat in the? Do you eat uh, in the? Uh, like the employee dining room? Yes. Yeah. You eat down there? Yeah. What's that like? Uh, I used to do it at the Riviera. It's like a low-budget buffet. Is it below deck or no? No, it's on the casino floor level. But okay. I, it, yeah. it, it, it can be rough. Oh, the Riviera used to be horrible. Sometimes things are sorted by colors. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, they, I'm not letting that stand. <laughs> How come they've never made a, a, a chip with, with me on it? I'm just curious. Did you ask him to? No, no, I've never asked. <laughs> I just didn't know. I mean, they they did boys to men. For, I, I still have some boys to men fives. I just think they should do a chip for me, maybe before they officially go over to the hard rock. When when is the the date? We don't know when the date for the hard rock is. No, they already they already took over. 
But it's a sign? Is it called Hard Rock? No, they, they have the rights to use the name Mirage, but they bought it in December, so. Do you guys have, is there like a sensitivity class that you guys have to take to like make sure you don't say anything inappropriately about no, the tribe or anything like that? But I did think it was weird that they bought the casino and they uh, rented the land back. Oh. I thought that was kind of a. Well, I don't I don't remind me, I'm not even going to get involved in that. Okay. I think we're all just renting the land. Um, <laughs> do you know that I've never been off out? Like I, I don't ever leave the Mirage in like 14 years. I had a feeling. Never, <laughs> never left. What's life like off the strip? It's pretty normal. Schools, churches, neighborhoods, stores. Talk to me about your church. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go. Uh, um, your brother is a dealer. Yeah, on day shift, and I switch my days off to Thursday, Friday, and you always come in Friday nights. Right, and your and your your wife works there too. Yeah, and the casino with all their high tech security still thinks that a husband and wife can't work together without Ocean's and Eleven <laughs> and robbing the whole place. Like, <laughs> yeah, is, what's the reason? I I don't know, but when she got promoted, mm -hmm. I was a bigger boss than what I am now. Uh -huh. I was a pit manager, and they just said you have to go to another shift, and I go. And they go, you go to day shift or graveyard. I go, well, you guys didn't think it through very much because my brother's a dealer on day shift. Now uh -huh. I could, for sure can steal. Right. You'd, so. you'd probably steal quicker with your brother <laughs> yeah. than you would your Be wife. Easier, yeah. So so I just took the uh, demotion back down to my old position. So. Oh, really? Yeah. So, what about, did they still give you the same pay, though? No. No? Mm -hmm. So now I'm just a floor person. I don't get this at all. Yeah. What a sacrifice you made for your wife. Yeah, that's usually how it works. I would hold that over her head every day. <laughs> um, you met your wife at the Mirage. Yes. Are you allowed to fraternize with employees? Is there a rule against it or no? It's frowned upon, like a lot of things. I met my yeah. wife at work. Yeah. You're like not supposed to date people at work. I don't get that. It's like, well, this is the only place I'm at. How am I not going to date someone here? It's like anything. It's all those reality shows. Like, oh, like, can you believe they actually fell in love? It's like, yeah, I can. You put me in a room with six people. I'm I'm having sex with one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Open this curtain. <laughs> you ever seen gambling change someone's life for the better? I, I would have to argue like all the employees. Sure. It's definitely changed their life for the better. It creates all those jobs. Is it a good is it a good line of work? Oh yeah. I, I especially for what I get paid, I didn't go to college and I mean again you College is fucking useless. Well, I'm just saying, I didn't I went have- to college. I have a degree in marketing. <laughs> you want to talk about, you want to talk All I did is wasted $50,000 of my parents' money. No offense, UCF. It's a great honor to have graduated <laughs> from your school. Um, you, how long will you, do you think you'll do it for the rest of your life in some level? Yeah. Because, I mean, it's it's what I've been doing my whole life. So, I mean, I am in the trucking business because of my brother-in-law. Yeah. So a side hustle during the pandemic. Pandemic shuts down. You say to yourself, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy two semi-trucks. Well, not quite. Okay. <laughs> my wife's brother, he's an owner-operator, and he just said, I know you. You drive stick shift. You fix everything yourself. Can you drive a truck? I go, I'll figure it out. Uh-huh. So he went with, bought a truck. It was going good. Then the casino opened back up. So now he's like, well, we could just put a driver in it. Did you operator. watch the movie Over the Top first to get well, inspiration? No, but that is my password for everything now. <laughs> I do use Lincoln Hawk for everything. <laughs> oh, man. You turn that you turn that hat around and make you yeah. feel like. By the way, did you, did you have to take go to school to learn how to yeah, drive it? Yeah, I went to school, got how my license. How long was that? Uh, one week, one-on-one. -on -one. I paid extra so I could just get it over with. Well, congratulations. That's better than college. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Did you have that, like like a whole ceremony and everything for when you graduated? No, no, oh, no. no. <laughs> Is there a full sleeper in the back of it? Yeah, yeah. What size bed does it hold? I fit, and I'm 6'5". 6'5"? So. Yeah. Uh, what do you weigh? 295. Do you really? Yeah. And Trump weighs, so Trump weighs 85 <laughs> pounds less than you. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't seem correct. No, it's not. It's not. It's no. not correct. Yeah. So you bought a truck, and now you're renting it out to somebody well, to drive. Well, no, I, we have a driver. Yeah. So we do a, a split. They they drive full time, and we do a fifty fifty split. And then the first truck went so well that we ended up buying a second truck. All right. So now you're running a trucking business. I'm getting there. Like her brother, they they manage like seventeen trucks, and they own a few. And mm -hmm. it seems to be you know Carl Malone. Well. Yes. You know he had sex with like a child. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but, he, but, he, but you bring that up because he also drives a semi-truck. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know why I brought it up, but I all, then, then I didn't care about the truck part because I remember that he had sex with a child at one point. Is there an actual vault? Uh, there, there is, like, in the cage, there's, like, 
vault back in the cage. I've been back there. What's the code? Uh, that they don't they don't tell me that. But. I don't understand how anybody steals anything from because they're so it's just obnoxious. You can't even cash a thousand dollar chip without twenty people looking at it first. Yeah, if you're gonna steal there, you're, you're stealing like nickels and dimes because everything else they watch. Uh huh. So that's I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, you're telling me. I'm go ahead and start giving you, giving printing fives. Plan, yeah, start printing fives, guys. <laughs> Let's go. No one's checking the fives. Do you do you gamble twenty dollars on? Uh, uh, sports betting. Do you use an app to do it, or do you place it in person? No, an app. So, so I have the Bet MGM Sports app, guys. I'm not sponsored. Let me just. I want to know how much money I have in my account currently. You guess. If you can guess how much money I have in my account, I'll I'll give you the hundred dollars. That's all. No, you have to guess. What's what's a, <laughs> within five hundred dollars of what's in my account? Let's see if you can guess. Go ahead. You take your time to think about it. I am you know say... my gambling. I'm going to say $1,700. Oh, fuck. <laughs> How much did I say? 500. I have to give him 500 bucks? I give him 100 bucks. <laughs> what is look, it? Look at him. Can you read it? <laughs> yeah. That was 1824. God damn it. <laughs> See, that's why you're good. You know, you know exactly how much money I have. 18, 1824 hours. You got to be ashamed of yourself. Bet MGM. Juice my account because now I'm down another 100 bucks. <laughs> You want to go double or nothing on how much money I cash I carry? No, no, good. For you. I'm not. I'm not a gambling guy. I'll take my hundred bucks. Fuck! I don't have. I don't have a hundred on me. We're gonna get it. I'll make good before I wind up dead in the you back could, of a you, fucking. You could sell me semi truck. I've never been to a strip club in Vegas. No, no. Is that is that surprising? I figured you'd wander off. I've never one been time in your twenties when you're. I've never been no? to a strip club in Vegas. If my wife ever dies. Like, and I'm still, you know, in, Not in jail, fighting shape, right? <laughs> <laughs> Things are going to get real wild. <laughs> Were you at the casino when Roy was attacked? Uh, yes. I'm not smiling because I think it's funny. <laughs> I'm just like, what a weird day in history that you were a part of. Yeah, it was weird. Everyone was coming out. I didn't think it was like, thought everyone was like seeing things wrong in the show or something, but it, that was probably. <laughs> Some bad. I have no follow up question except for the fact that I know that you were there. I mean, it was his fault, though, right? In general, I think that's the consensus. I mean, I, anytime you're around wild animals, I, I feel like it's your fault. Mm -hmm. So yeah. You ever wanted to own a big cat? No. <laughs> you have any pets? I do. A couple little dogs. What do you have? Uh, I'm not sure the exact breed because uh -huh. uh, we had, we adopted them from like the animal shelter. Oh, but you're such a hero. When they're playing in the house, I always hope that one of them will kill the other one because they're annoying. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. You know, I I found uh, my little dog. I have a medium-sized dog and then a little dog. And the other day, I couldn't find her. And I'm walking through the yard. And then I just glance over here. And I, there's like an overflow area in my pool, which I always pull rabbits and rats out of uh, from time to time. Don't worry. The filter, uh, the filter system cleans all that up. Anyway, <laughs> and I just see my dog had been in, is in there. She's stuck in there, She's swimming back and forth, trying to get out. Could have been in there for 15 minutes. Could have been in there for six hours. Don't really know. Should have been dead. But hmm. she survives again. Anyway, I, I, she, I, my point is, she always irritated me. And then I almost lost her last week. And I was like, oh, that would have been a shitty way to lose her. So <laughs> you don't want your dogs to eat each other. <laughs> The Rat Pack. Did you care about the Rat Pack at all? I think it was a little bit before my time. Of course, it was before your time. We're the same like age. Fun, but but did you like? Did you? Were, do you have any like a soft spot for the the, the heyday, the Frank Sinatra world? Do you have a? Do you look at that as like I like something it. neat? I, I think the old days were better. I think you can get rid of some of the bad employees and you know spend some time digging some dirt in the desert. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't. I don't agree. <laughs> I think the new world. You, you haven't worked in the casino with some of the employees. No, I've 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 been in casinos. I've a way a, a lot more than your average uh, degenerate. I went to a wedding once at Bally's, and this is how gross this Vegas wedding was. As the bride was walking down the aisle, multiple men that were sitting on the aisle gave her a good slap on the ass, <laughs> and I just remember going. This is insanity. Like, this is crazy. It was so, I mean, they were, we were heckling the whole time. This was like, and it was because the person that was getting married, the, the, was, he owned a comedy club, but the woman that she, he was marrying was not. 
in the business and and she had a real family and they had to just watch this and i was just like this is horrific <laughs> you were were you at, you were not at the concert no no but i did work that night uh huh yeah and the whole city going lockdown yeah yeah they emptied out the whole casino and it was kind of chaotic when they did and people running through my wife got a uh, stampeded down the hallway everyone you know kind of left in a in a hurry like chaotic and she got pushed towards the hallway and ended up uh in a room with like 50 other people like on the you know 20th floor because it's a weird to, stampede that brought her to the 20th floor yeah I, her story's not checking out at I all know. right now it's very suspicious <laughs> <laughs> this is the most bizarre stampede <laughs> up the elevator <clears throat> somebody press 20 <laughs> No, that, that's I'm sure it was terrifying, and I'm glad that that obviously didn't. And I mean, it, it as bad as it could be. Yeah. Whatever. Were you Were you working the night uh, Tupac was shot? <laughs> no, I was just out of high school. I was what 98. I don't know. Yeah. But you were there in Vegas. Yeah. You didn't care. No, I did. Were you a biggie of, guy? The fuck. I do left do like my biggie more than uh, Tupac. You? Oh wow! Battle yeah. lines here. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Agree to disagree. <laughs> well, listen, Josh, I appreciate you uh, stopping by. Thank you. And uh, thank you. I'll see you in two weeks. Yeah, I'll be there. Pasha. Well, did you enjoy that, Carl? Josh, I appreciate you being on the show. And uh, I sent you the $100 for losing that bet during the interview. I also sent him a stack of of scratchers, a whole stack of them, and he won $7. Now, why did I send him a, a stack of scratchers? I'll tell you why. Because my in-laws, I, I hate to go on another tangent about my in-laws, but every uh, Christmas, they like to pretend like, oh, well, we've got this tradition of putting a scratcher uh, on everybody's plate for the Christmas dinner. And I'm like, that's not unique. Everyone does that. That's why the Scratchers has all these stupid Christmas themed things. And there's nothing more, you know, the only thing more embarrassing than buying Scratchers is redeeming a Scratcher. Oh, a one. That's just so stupid. Anyway, uh, I get an, I, I, I host uh, uh, this holiday dinner. And then everybody gets a scratcher. And then what do they do, Carl? They scratch. Oh, now I get all this shit, you know, shavings all over our nice table. And what does everybody do? Oh, just, I'm sure somebody will clean that up. Now, if that's not enough to infuriate me, listen to this, Carl. For two years, two years in a row, everyone has forgotten to lift their plate up and grab the scratcher. So for two years, I just collected the scratches and put them back in the drawer. I don't even know if those if they are valid anymore. But Josh, I'm happy to tell my family they would have won seven dollars. All right, um, some plugs: boyswearpink.com. Check that out. Purchase something for your friend's kid. That's a good idea. Reminder: it's charitable. Uh, the goat. Coming out on freebie and Prime in a few months. Getting getting excited about that. May 4th, the Netflix Comedy Festival in Los Angeles at the Dolby. I'll be performing. And next week, ready for this? Big announcement. I will be performing at a new casino for the first time in 15 years in Las Vegas. Oh. <gasps> What's it going to be? Oh, I hope it's pet friendly. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to go to a new casino. Uh, all right. But before we go, uh, another one of my son's bedtime stories when he was three. Uh, people that are just listening to this know that the people that watch it on YouTube, not only are you getting the animation of Eddie Gosling, you're also getting subtitles so you can figure out what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> See you next week. Okay, tell me one story about helicopters. Once upon a time, in a way where on the weather, on a boat with a helicopter, three helicopters, and there were so many talks that they eaten 
The helicopter didn't know at under the boat with a salt. But the salt didn't know at the boat was going on a big, big way. And the big, big way, the boat was posted on all the way. And then the salt, and then the, and then the salt sail off the bottom of the boat. And then, and then it, the, and then it went fast as soon, and then there was an hour they popped it up and ate the whole boat. The end. Wow. Pasha. Pasha.